And then Ibn Dhul-Jawshan takes the head and he sends it to Ibn Ziyad. And Ibn Ziyad gathers the people and he put the head in front of him. And he had a metal rod in his hand and he was hitting, as he was talking, he was hitting the lips of al Hussein with it, saying, Wallahi, I have never seen anyone as handsome as he is. So now this is the head of, of the grandson of the Prophet and this man, Abdullah ibn Ziyad, is hitting it. Hitting the lips of the head of al Hussein with this metal rod. And one of the people who witnessed this was the companion, Zayd ibn Arqam, radiallahu anhu. And he said, remove that rod from those lips. فَوَاللَّهِ الَّذِي لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُوْ I have seen the lips of the Prophet ﷺ on those two lips, kissing them. The Prophet ﷺ used to kiss them, kiss Al-Hasan and al Hussein on their lips when they were young. And Zayd ibn Arqam anhu was an old man and he starts to cry and the people cried because of what he said. So then Abdullah ibn Ziyad tells him, أَبْكَ اللَّهُ عَيْنَكَ Meaning, may Allah cause you to cry, may Allah cause you sorrow. By Allah, had you not been Shaykhun Akhraq, an old man with no intelligence, who has become senile, I would have struck your neck. With such audacity, he speaks to one of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. So Zayd ibn Arqam got up and he went out. And he said some things. He insulted Abdullah ibn Ziyad to the people. And then Ibn Ziyad sends the head of al Hussein to the Khalifa, Yazid ibn Muawiyah. Al Ghazi ibn Rabi' al Jurshi narrates saying, Wallahi, I was with Yazid ibn Muawiyah in Dimash. When Zuhair ibn Qais enters, and with him is the head of al Hussein. So Yazid said, Woe to you, what is that with you? Because Yazid ibn Muawiyah had commanded that they bring him al Hussein, but not to kill him. Zuhair ibn Qais says, Rejoice, O Amir al-Mu'mineen. al Hussein ibn Ali ibn Abi Talib came to us with his family and 60 men of his Shia, meaning 60 men of his supporters. So we went out to him and told him to surrender and abide by the rule of the Amir, Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad, or fight. So they chose to fight. So we went to them and surrounded them and the swords took their toll on them and they started to flee to where they couldn't flee. And then he continues saying, and it was... As if killing some camels or taking a short nap. That's how easy it was. Until we killed the last of them. And now their bodies and their clothes are torn and their cheeks are baked by the sun. They didn't even bury them. They left them there in the sun. Until an Arab tribe came the next day and buried them. And then tears come to the eyes of Yazid ibn Muawiyah. And he says to him, Woe to you. I wanted you to obey me without killing al Hussein." لعن الله ابن سمية Abdullah ibn Ziyad His mother's name was Sumayya So he's saying لعن الله ابن سمية The son of Sumayya May Allah curse the son of Sumayya But Allah if I were there I would have forgiven him رحم الله الحسين Starts to say May Allah have mercy on Hussein So the man thought That when he Brings the good news to the Khalifa That the Khalifa will give him something As a reward And he puts the head of, of Al-Husayn In front of Yazid and Yazid starts to say, Amma wallahi. If I were there, I would not have killed you. And then they brought the women of Ahl al-Bayt. He had them bring the women of Ahl al-Bayt, who were with al-Husayn, to take them to Ibn Ziyad. And he commanded, Yazid commanded that Ibn Ziyad treats them well. And then he sent them to Yazid. So they brought them to the Khalifa, who commanded al numan ibn Bashir to send men to accompany them to Medina. And the only one who was not killed from Ahl al-Bayt was Ali, the son of al Hussein, who later on becomes known as Zayn al Abidin because of his worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And some of the people from Bani Umayyah said, Don't leave him. Wallahi, if he grows up, he will revolt against you and Bani Umayyah. And Yazid refused to kill him. And this shows if Yazid were as bad as people made him out to be, he would have had him killed. So the women of Ahlul Bayt stayed with the family of Muawiyah, the women of the family of Muawiyah. And they stayed in the house of the Khalifa. And the women of the family of Muawiyah were, يعني, stayed with them for three days crying over the murder of Al-Hussein. And Yazid would not have lunch nor dinner unless Ali, the son of Al-Hussein, was with him. And the amazing thing is that this narration of how Yazid treated them well and he would not eat until 
Ali the son of Hussein was with them is in the authentic books of the Sunnah and is also in the books of a Shia today. But they don't like to mention this narration. And when they were leaving to Medina, Yazid says to Ali ibn, ibn Hussein and he tells him, tells him, May Allah disgrace Ibn Sumiyyah. Amma Allah, if I were with your father, he would not ask me of anything except that I would give it to him. And I would prevent harm from him with all my ability, even at the expense of some of my own children dying. Saying if some of my own children had to die to protect al Hussein, I would do it. But Allah has decreed what you have seen. And then he, pre- and he prepared them well. He gives them good provision. And he gives them clothing and wealth. And he instructed those accompanying them to take care of them. And they head out to Medina. This son of al Hussein Ali, when he grows up, the only one who survived, when he grows up, he has a great place amongst the Muslims. In the days of Hisham ibn Abdul Malik, the Khalifa, he came to Mecca for Hajj. And there were many people in that Hajj. And the soldiers, his soldiers, he's the Khalifa now, Hisham ibn Abdul Malik. And his soldiers were trying to open a path for him. So he can come and near the Kaaba and kiss the black stone. His soldiers by force couldn't open a path for him. There was so much traffic and it was so crowded that the Khalifa is not able to get to the black stone. So he and his soldiers stepped back and they said, we'll wait for a time and when there's less traffic, then we'll try to open a way for the Khalifa. As they're sitting there waiting, Ali ibn al Hussein, ibn Ali ibn Abi Talib, came. And when the people saw him, they moved aside for him. They started to open a path for him to get to the black stone. And he got all the way to the black stone and kissed it and then he continued. So the Khalifa was amazed. Who is this man? The Khalifa was, his soldiers by force couldn't open a way. And this man, he doesn't even ask the people and they immediately open up a path for him. So he asked, who is that? And then al farazdaq was the poet, he heard him ask and he responded to him with very beautiful lines of poetry describing who Ali ibn al-Hussein is. 